Hey, how's it going, universe? Welcome to another daily movie review. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to get my voice to keep, get going here. I got COVID. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the 1986 film The Delta Force. Oh, yeah. A movie I have heard of. I've seen pictures from, seen the poster. Seen the poster a lot, but I never, I don't know, I never really thought to watch it. Like, I, like I, only, I think I never really was a huge Chuck Norris fan. Like, I grew up watching uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, and I'd seen a few other things like Silent Rage. I had seen, I've seen a few of his older movies. I actually got this, the reason why I saw Delta Force is because I got this for like five bucks. Hamiltonbooks.com, everybody, if you want to go there, you can find some great deals. Things like this for five dollars. And uh, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll check out some of these old Chuck Norris action movies. Like, I've seen... I've probably seen Missing in Action at some point, and I just don't remember it. Um, but so I was interested in checking it out, and I was like, well, laying sick in bed, another one of these opportunities to kind of watch, probably some dumb action movie I've never seen, and I don't know, maybe just turn my brain off for a little bit and just lay there in kind of like a coma haze uh, while the cold medicine does its thing, and and I try to get some rest. Well... I was not prepared for the Delta Force. I'll just say that right there. Um, this is a very weird movie. It's weird all over the place because it feels like some sort of weird tax scam. <laughs> like, I would love to know what the budget is for the Delta Force because <laughs> it feels like it was just kind of there to line the pockets of the producers, maybe a few of the actors. Um, well, let's just get into the particulars here before we keep going. Uh, it's directed by Menahem Golan, written by James Bruner and Menahem Golan. It stars Chuck Norris, Lee Marvin, Martin Balsam, Joey Bishop, Robert Forrester, Lane Kazan, George Kennedy, Han Hannah Sh Shigula, Robert Vaughn, Bose Fenson, Shelley Winters. I mean, this thing's got a Steve James. It's got a, a stacked cast of kind of a who's who of stars of yesteryear like so by when this comes out these people have, are you know not washed up or anything but they were not big movie stars anymore you know they, their heyday was more like the 60s and 70s and uh this movie kind of just uses all of them in this movie most of them as uh hostages these terrorists have taken and then one of the reasons i wanted to watch this movie is because i'm actually a big fan of lee marvin i really like lee marvin if you've never seen hell in the pacific I suggest checking that out. And also, like a few months ago, because I've been doing this this long, these daily videos, uh, I watched for the first time this movie, Point Blank, which is kind of a um, kind of a proto-payback, if you're familiar with the movie Payback. But Lee Marvin's great. I've always really liked Lee Marvin. He's one of these tough guy, man's man character actors, and he's always delivers something interesting. So I was like, oh, cool, Lee Marvin's in it. Uh, then I saw Robert Forster's in it. You know, I actually really like Robert Forster. I think he's a great kind of soulful character actor. Did a lot of exploitation work. And this, he's playing a, a Middle Eastern terrorist. Uh, and he and he goes for it. And he's actually a lot of fun in the movie. That's the th weird thing about this movie. The movie feels like it's fucking insane. Like the tone of the movie, uh, the weird, it's got a weird like flatness to it. So like it feels like a TV movie sometimes. And then other times it feels just like an incompetent action movie. Like, so it feels like a bad melodrama, like TV melodrama and then an incompetent action movie. And then it's got, and then it's cast like the people that are actually the Delta force, Chuck Norris, Lee Marvin, assorted other actors. Uh, they're all fucking awful. Like I never thought Chuck Norris was a great actor or anything, but maybe it's just been a while since I've seen like Chuck Norris in a movie the last time, I mean, the last time I saw Chuck Norris in a movie was the Expendables movies. Yeah, like I hadn't even gone back and watched any of his older stuff since like Expendables two or three, whatever one he's in, uh, came out. So it's been a long time, and I was just like, I was taken aback how bad he was. I mean, like I like it to the point where I was just like, how did anybody even think that he was gonna be a thing? Because they push him. You know, they push Chuck Norris. I mean, he's not, it's not like he's not a skillful technician. And the guy fucking fought Bruce Lee on, on, on film. There, luckily, he doesn't really have to say anything. Because he's got an interesting presence, an interesting physicality. But as soon as he has to open his mouth, dude, it's like game over. 
I mean, because this is not, I mean, he had done two movies, yeah, Missing in Action and Missing in Action 2, which I think Missing in Action 2 is the one people mostly point to. He had done those before this came out, and I think he's got more of a speaking role in those movies, so I can't even imagine. I might have to take some time before I jump into those things, because I was like, holy shit. And then Lee Marvin, I mean, this is the Paycheck Award. <laughs> he should have won an award for a paycheck. And this is, unfortunately, this is his last movie. And he's, you know, he's too old for the part. You can tell he's in some pain. He's old. I mean, relatively old. I mean, he was he, he was 63 when he died, so he was like 61 when they filmed this. And he already looks like he's like 80. Uh, you know, people lived a different kind of lifestyle back then, folks. <laughs> Smoking and drinking and uh, not really exercising, probably not eating too great. And, uh, yeah, he does not. He, uh he does doesn't look like he's 60 he looks like he's about in his late 70s uh he looks pretty rough and he doesn't really have too much to do and he's so phoning it in i guess he's just meeting the level of everybody else in the movie the people that i will say actually seem like they were trying were the people that play the hostages like the um like martin balsam and Robert Forrester, George Kennedy, because Shelley Winters, they're in like a, they're kind of sequestered from the rest of the movie. Honestly, it's so, it's a weirdly paced movie because it introduces the Delta Force in this really anticlimactic, it's supposed to be kind of funny, thrilling way, but it's really flat. Uh, and then they're setting up this kind of joke about Chuck Norris never leaving anybody behind and always being late. <laughs> And it's just, whatever, it just didn't work. And then you basically spend the rest of the first hour, hour 10 of the movie, with the hostages in the plane that's being hijacked. Uh, and Robert Forrester and the terrorists. And it's not, like, all bad, but it's also not not good either. It's just kind of whatever. Uh, there's some fun stuff, some fun performances. I think Robert Forrester, watching him play uh, a brown in brown facey, a Middle Eastern terrorist is definitely interesting. Certainly interesting. And then it's got this whole like weird, like how dare you be anti-Israel vibe to the movie. Um, even like one of the guys, I think what's his name? Uh, Martin Balsam's like a Holocaust survivor. He's got the tattoo on his arm and they make, you know, a big deal out of it. And it's understandable. You're a Holocaust survivor, but it ends up being kind of like a part of the subtext of the movie, but it doesn't, actually have anything to do with most of what's going on and uh i don't know i mean maybe it was just that my sick haze but i just was like i i wanted to shut it off for most of the time i was watching it i really could not get into it like at all i was just kind of bored um, and I was just hoping for some schlocky trash, you know, like I wasn't expecting Shakespeare. I wasn't expecting anything like good, but I was expecting something that would be entertaining. You know, it's one of those things. It's kind of like maybe if I watch this with like other people and we were having a couple drinks or something, maybe it would be fun to kind of goof on uh, the Delta Force. But watching it by yourself, it really does not afford you that opportunity, you know? It's kind of like, you know, I've tried to watch, what is it, The Room? The first time I saw The Room, Tommy was so is The Room, I watched that by myself. I was just kind of bored, you know? It, you chuckle every once in a while, but the, not having that communal kind of lambasting experience makes the movie completely fall flat. It's just a bad movie. Like, doesn't matter how the sincerity that was put forth in the making of it. Sure, that makes it, I guess, interesting in a meta sense, but it's not an entertaining movie. This is a bad, boring movie. And the Delta Force kind of treads in that territory. Now, granted, not as incompetently made as The Room. In fact, Robert Forster was on record saying that Menem Golan was his favorite director to work with. And Menem Golan has made a bunch of movies. He made 47 movies. 47 director's credits. I have not. Seems like a lot of TV movies. I mean, he did Over the Top after this, you know, the uh, Stallone movie, which I don't think I've ever actually seen Over the Top. Hannah's War during World War II. Hungarian Jew living in Brazil. Yeah, I mean, so he's done some stuff. It doesn't seem like he's ever done anything that was, you know, super well known or well respected, I guess, outside of this. Because I was just looking for something. He's a jobber, like one of these just jobber dudes. 
But the Delta Force, I, I, I would not say it's a well-directed movie. It feels like kind of incompetent because it doesn't ever establish a tone or like a pace. Um, it never feels like it's building towards anything. It's never exciting and it's clumsy. Like the way that they introduce the Delta Force is, is clumsy. The way they explain that they're all kind of not together and that they have to kind of get them all to come back together over the first like hour and 20 minutes of the movie to go s- save these hostages is super awkward and clunky and I mean shit dude you gotta give I guess maybe you need to give old Chuck a couple more line readings because some of the takes are awful he's supposed to have some one liner jokes nah they don't work they don't work at all but yeah I don't know I was just hoping it would be just a shitty, fun movie. Funny, like in the way that, like, Commando is, right? Like, Commando, not a good movie. But it's not, like, incompetent, and it's not boring. This was fucking boring, and it's also, like, two hours long, too. That was part of the problem. I think, yeah, it's over two hours long. Like, if you had just, if this had been a 90-minute movie, you could probably forgive a lot of what I'm saying. Because you just wouldn't notice as much. But having being forced to spend this much time with two-dimensional uh, flat characters in a movie that has no interesting set pieces and no interesting moments at all, it's just this kind of just un- happens in front of you in like the most uneventful, boring way. I don't know. Maybe it's ultra-realistic like that. I don't know. Maybe that's what it would be really like to be in the Delta Force. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they got, he's really got the, uh, maybe Golan here has really got his uh, finger on the pulse of what it's like to be part of the Delta Force. He's like, nah, it's boring. It's boring, dog. <laughs> Golan. Well, Golan, I'm sorry you're dead. Maybe you could have. Uh, but he's mostly, I guess, a producer. He produced Cobra. <laughs> the Apple. Yeah. Well, I guess that's kind of all I got to say. It's just a weird movie. I, I didn't really, uh, I didn't go for it, man. You know, I was hoping to. I was hoping it would be some, some kitschy fun, some campy, a campy good time. I like a good campy movie too, especially a good campy action movie. You know, something that doesn't take itself very seriously. And then, because you would think this is like the way it's presented, you would think you're gonna watch like some kind of like GI Joe ish kind of over the top spoofy campy movie and it's not it's like if you thought the expendables was bad you should watch the delta force because you're gonna really appreciate the expendables after watching the delta force it's kind of a similar got kind of a similar vibe to it honestly uh well it's you would like it to although i have my own criticisms for the expendables movies i'm in a weird camp where i actually think Expendables 3 is the best one because it's the dumbest one. It's the one that kind of understands the kind of movie that they're supposed to be. Sometimes Stallone, he just he likes likes to take things a little too seriously sometimes. I mean, that first... The first Expendables movie, he's just like, oh yeah, we gotta make a statement about the plight of the people that have to deal with South American drug lords, which is like a noble thing to do. But you're in, it's in the expendables. So it just doesn't like, does not resonate. <laughs> it seems almost inappropriate. Kind of did the same thing in that Rambo Last Blood, which I kind of came around on. I actually kind of enjoyed that movie. But you're like, you're talking about human sex trafficking in your Rambo movie, which is not necessarily, I guess it, it's not it doesn't need to be like some sort of mutually exclusive thing like you can't do that in these types of movies but i think last blood ultimately works in a way that the first expendables doesn't work cuz that one's trying to have his cake and eat it too last blood is like deathly serious the whole time but we are aware of like that it is kind of goofy because of we we know the franchise we know who stallone is so but anyways that's neither here nor there maybe someday we'll talk about all the Rambo movies. Uh, but today we're talking about the, the Delta Force and how I was very underwhelmed by it. I couldn't recommend it. I couldn't even re- recommend it if you like bad movies. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there could change my mind. Maybe somebody, maybe we have a viewing party with some, maybe someday I'll, I'll drag some Zoobox goes to the movies guys together in a room and we'll all watch the Delta Force together and we'll get baked or something and I'll change my mind. But 
as it stands right now, watching it while under the influence of probably some sort of cold medicine, I cannot say that it is worth your time. Sorry. I just can't do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. Chuck Norris is an awful actor. It's actually turned me off to wanting to watch Missing in Action 1 and 2. <laughs> like, he's so bad in this movie. I'm like, I don't even know if I even care to check these out anymore. Uh, who, who am I kidding? You know I'm going to watch these stupid fucking movies. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, you want to keep up to date with everything Zoobox Nation, there's some links in the description for Facebook, for Instagram, for my personal Twitter. Also, if you'd like to make a request for one of these daily videos or something for the big show, for Zoobox Goes to the Movie, something for me, Dan Prophet, Danimal from Zoobox Corporate, or Big Paul to talk about... Or maybe even my wife will come back and talk about a movie. You just leave it in the comments and we'll throw it up there. We'll throw it. We'll throw it up there on that list, in the, that big old list in the sky. You know what I mean? All right, everybody. You have the best one. <laughs>